Join me this time as I head to Oxford Gaming Market for the very first time on the hunt for Holy Grail games. The rare and expensive, the odd and the strange, the rarities you don't see every day. And I managed to find what is without a shadow of a doubt the mintiest SNES game I have ever, ever seen. Hello again folks and welcome back to a very exciting live game hunting episode. That's because this time, for the first time ever, I'll be hitting up Oxford and visiting the Oxford Gaming Market. And trust me, these gaming markets are the best places to find some of the weird, the wonderful, the rare and the expensive items to add to your collection. And trust me, this time we find some absolutely amazing things at Oxford Gaming Market. Now, I have never been to Oxford Gaming Market before, but I have been to a few of these gaming markets around the UK. And here's the thing. When you are hunting at these gaming markets, you will be absolutely spoiled for choice. Now, of course, when I'm hunting at these gaming markets, I do have a finite budget. But sometimes you just have to pull the trigger. If you pass on something and go back five minutes later, it might be gone. And I have to be 100% sure when I pick up these items, as with some of these, I may never, ever see them again. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe. As I put new videos out every Saturday Live at 5, as well as bonus content throughout the week. And I really want you folks along for the ride. And this is just one of the many gaming markets I'm hoping to hit up over the course of 2024. And trust me, you don't want to miss it. Here we are then on the road to Oxford Gaming Market and it sure was an early start. I think myself and my good friend PS Too Many Games left around 6.30am and it was about a three or four hour drive to Oxford. But we arrived bright and early and in time to join the eager queues for early bird entry to the Oxford Gaming Market. So early bird entry was 11am. I think they sold 800 advanced tickets. So you can see here the queue was really starting to build but so was the excitement as we were super excited to get in, get on the hunt and see what we can find. The queues went down super quickly and just after 11am we were in for the Oxford Gaming Market. Now I had never been to this gaming market before and I had no idea what to expect but as soon as we entered those doors it was looking good. This was a well laid out market, there was lots of space and it wasn't too busy yet. Even though we had early entry it still seemed like there wasn't as many people as I'd normally see at a lot of these gaming markets and the thing that really blew me away was the space between the stalls more often than not you can't swing a ps too many games in these stalls but you can see here we have plenty of space to move around and more importantly plenty of space to hunt and let's jump straight in here i can see a gap and we're going straight into this box here and here is the thing with gaming markets you just have to get stuck in because you never ever know what you're gonna find and honestly chances are if you are looking for something rare or something you just don't see every day or some kind of oddity these are the places you're going to find it and this is a game i've been looking for for a very long while turtles tournament fights but unfortunately it didn't have the manual so i did pass but this stall had all the turtles heavy hitters including the hyperstone heist but again a little out of budget today here's one you don't see very often jurassic park the chaos continues the very rare sequel to the jurassic park game on the snes but I'm looking for something a little bit different today. I'm looking for the out of the ordinary, the rare, the strange, the stuff you do not see very often. Kind of like this, the Tetris soundtrack on CD. A really cool oddity. And these are the kind of items I'm looking for today. The stuff you just never see before. Because honestly... These gaming markets are the best places to find items like this. So I'm trying to bide my time, save my money and wait for the one. Shout out to this low-key banger right here. I think this is also available on the PS1, Urban Chaos. This is such a good game and a game I don't hear enough people talk about. It's like a very early Grand Theft Auto mixed with State of Emergency. Really interesting third-person game with some really cool driving mechanics. And definitely, I would say, somewhat of a hidden gem and a pretty cheap game. So if you're looking for something to add to your collection, I definitely recommend it. 
Of course, when I head to these gaming markets, like many other people, I am looking for vintage Nintendo cardboard. Because honestly, once again, this is the best place to find it. And you'll see that later on, as honestly, in this video, I find the mintiest SNES game I've ever seen in my entire life. But fear not, we are going to see a little bit of everything from Atari to Xbox. And this next store had some really interesting games. Some of these were repro, but there were some pretty cool titles here. And honestly, if you are just looking to play the game this is a very cheap way to do it especially with some of these rare attires like this one right here teenage mutant ninja turtles normally this is a very expensive game and a rare game so that's a really interesting way to be able to play it on the cheap now coming up next is something i've never seen before and if i can get this at a good price because of its rarity i really want to add this into my collection no, I was gonna say I never knew they did a WWE game on the Engage. Yeah, I th I'm not sure if it was ever sold in the UK. That, that's a European one. Yeah. So we have found a WWE game which wasn't released in the UK. is for a very obscure console and was only five pounds. Yes, I am picking that up. That is the kind of thing I'll be looking for today at this gaming market. And of course, I'm looking for some SNES heavy hitters as well because, like I said earlier, this is the best place to find them. But you can also get some cheap boxed retro bangers, such as this box here, which had some really good tiles. I think most of these range for like 10, 15, 20 pounds. There were some really good tiles in here, including this one, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, which I would normally pick up, but it is a fairly common game. And today I am looking for the rarer games because, as I said, when I'm at the gaming market, I'm looking for the rarities, even though, once again, I was tempted by this Primal Rage, but it was very early in the gaming market and when i found those big items i wanted to make sure i had the money for them i'm always on the lookout for mega drive games to expand my collection especially blue spine games i'm trying to get a full shelf of these on one of my ikea billies and this was a really cool game here sensible soccer and it was also really cool to see these in box protectors you always see nintendo cardboard in box protectors but it's very rare you see them on mega drive games and honestly as these are getting older it does make sense now, there's some really cool stuff on this store, but nothing prepared me for what was coming up next. As I said, I'm always looking for the rare and the obscure, but I've never, ever seen this many Atari Lynx games boxed and complete in one place. This is absolutely crazy. I don't know. This could well be the entire Atari Lynx collection. I don't know how many games were released for this console, but the artwork on these was incredible. And honestly... I doubt ever again I will see this many Atari Lynx games in person. Here we have one of my favourite games of the 16-bit era, NBA Jam. Without a doubt, one of my favourite sports games of all time. And this was a really, really nice copy of this game. But here's the thing, it is a fairly common game, so I did pass this time. Kind of regret it a little bit as it was a very good price and in very, very good condition. But... I'm looking for the rare, the weird, and the wonderful today. Now, this store had loads of really good condition box Nintendo cardboard. And it's getting harder and harder to find this because, honestly, it's getting into more and more collector's collections and never leaving. I was once again tempted by this one, Star Wars, this time for the NES. But I did pass this. Once again, to be honest, it is quite a common game. And again, today, at its gaming market, I'm looking for the weird and the wonderful. And it doesn't get weirder or more wonderful than this. Don't panic semen for the Sega Dreamcast. Now, I didn't pick this up this time. Even though it is very weird and very wonderful, it's actually a reasonably easy to find game. But if you have no idea what it is, just trust me. Look it up on YouTube. It's one of the weirdest games on any console. This right here was super cool. The Japanese release of Dino Crisis 5th Anniversary for the PlayStation 1. Now, this had a pretty eye-watering price tag of £150. I have never seen this before. I have no idea the value of this one, so I did pass. But colour me intrigued by this one. Here we have one of my most wanted games, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time for the SNES. This was boxed and complete at £180, which is actually a really good price for this one. But when the day comes when I finally pull the trigger on this one, I am looking for the mintiest of mint. 
I was having a really good day at Oxford Gaming Market, but so far, other than that N-Gage game we picked up earlier in the day, I hadn't picked anything up. That's because there was nothing I'd seen that I had to have. As I've said multiple times in this video, when it comes to gaming markets, you have to be picky. I have a finite budget, and at the end of the day, once I spend that budget, it is gone. And I don't want to have buyer's remorse later in the day when I cannot afford to pick something up that I need to have for my collection. Something I have never seen before, or something I may never see again. But I knew it was going to be on the horizon. And trust me, stick with this video as we find some crazy crazy items i was quite tempted with this one ultimate mortal kombat 3 for the mega drive just because this one holds so much nostalgia for me me and my mate used to plow hours into this one back in the day trying to learn the fatalities but it is a fairly common one now this was something that did come as a nice surprise is it's not very often you see vintage and modern toys here at these gaming markets and i was blown away by how expensive these borderlands free statues are these days i remember when these were back in b m and i picked one of these up for 20 quid and thought, ah, oh, next time I go in, I'll pick up another one. And I'm gutted that I didn't get the full set of these. They are very, very expensive these days. Now, one thing which I've been on the hunt for for a very long while is a Game Genie, but I'm looking for a Game Genie for the Sega Mega Drive. That's because I want to see how big a tower of power I can build. So I have the Mega CD, I have the Mega Drive, I have the Master System Converter. I just need the Game Genie so that I can plug that into Sonic 3 and then into another game to build the Tower of Power. Speaking of the Mega Drive, here it is again, NBA Jam. Like I said, my favourite sports game of the 16-bit era and honestly to this day still one of my favorite sports games of all time but here's the big question should i try and pick it up boxed and complete for the mega drive or the snes let me know in the comments down below i've played both versions but honestly i'm not really sure which one i prefer so i'll be interested to hear what you folks think is best now, a lot of people think these gaming markets are expensive, but that doesn't have to be the case. Yes, most of the time you are paying a premium for the games you are picking up here, but there is some amazing deals to be had. Like this store here, who had loads of multi-buy deals. So I was looking for that box there. The notes say had £5 each or free for a tenner, which is a really good deal. And I had kind of different multiples this they had 40 quid each or free for 100 and various other offers sadly there was nothing i really needed here to take advantage of this kind of buy multiple games for a better price but this was a really good strategy for selling and honestly if they had three things i needed i'd have definitely taken advantage of this offer it's a really good way to bundle up games which as we all know at the end of the day is a great way to get a deal because people can manage to sell more games, you get to add more games to your collection, and who knows, maybe you'll pick something up that otherwise you wouldn't have picked up. But let me know in the comments down below, what is your best free for two offer you ever found? Here it is, I have finally found that once in a lifetime find. I have to have this. I've been hunting for this since the 90s, and honestly, I have never seen one in person. And there is no way I'm letting this one go. This was at an amazing price and I had to have it. Would you do 40 on it at all? Um, yeah, okay, you got cash? Uh, yeah, I can do cash. Yeah. yeah, cool. I had managed to find an absolute holy grail piece for my collection at an amazing price. And I didn't realize how good a deal that was until I looked up sold listings. But just around the corner is one of the best pickups I've ever had. I don't say this lightly, this could be the mintiest SNES game I've ever seen. That's just sticker residue. That's yeah, not yeah. on the box, that's on the plastic. Okay, cool. It's mint, man. Even the original receipt is still in there, bro. It's nice, man. I love the fact that it has the original sticker as well. Oh, man, everything, everything. The OG. That right there was the one, folks. A absolutely breathtakingly mint copy of Super Star Wars for the SNES, which I picked up from legendary YouTuber Ed Hunt, who was selling at Oxford Gaming Market. And honestly, again, stick around for the pickups as you will not believe how minty that game is. I do not say this lightly, but that is the mintest SNES game I have ever seen in my entire life. I was blown away by the condition of that game. It was a very expensive game. I'd blown a large portion of my budget, but 
it's breathtaking. How about this for something weird? This EK86 assault rifle controller for the PlayStation 3. I presume this works similarly to kind of the PlayStation 3 Move light gun as such. A very strange item indeed and I've never seen this before. Check out this selection of boxed retro goodness here. Feel free to pause the video and just take this all in. There is so many amazing games here. I think pound for pound, this could be one of the strongest tables that I saw at Oxford Gaming Market. So many grails right here. Now, earlier in the video, of course, I picked up Super Star Wars, and I already have Super Return of the Jedi, which means I'm looking for one last game. This game right here, Empire Strikes Back for the SNES, but unfortunately, just for budget reasons, I had to pass this time. But trust me, that game is top of the list of my most wanted games now for 2024. And again, trust me, by the end of 2024, that game will be mine. But there is still more of Oxford Gaming Market left to see today. I mentioned earlier in this video, I have been on the lookout for the longest time for a Game Genie specifically for the Sega Mega Drive in an effort to try and build the Tower of Power. And more often than not, I will see the SNES Game Genie or the NES Game Genie or even the Game Boy Game Genie. But I never seem to see the Mega Drive Game Genie. Honestly, I was starting to give up hope at this point. I have been looking for this for years until I finally managed to find it. The Game Genie for the Mega Drive for the bargain price of 16. I did manage to even haggle it down another two quid. This is super cool right here. This is Nintendo sponsored football shirt but here's the thing i have no idea what football team this is so if you know please let me know in the comments down below as i'd love to own this football shirt carrying on the hunt and here we have another copy of castlevania for the snes now this isn't a very uncommon game but it does command a high price this copy was 80 quid but i don't think it had the manual and honestly if i'm spending this kind of money on one of these snes heavy hitters it really for me has to have the manual. Here we have some more Sega Mega Drive games. And at the moment, I'm really specifically looking out for these blue spined games. That's because after organizing the games room recently, I realized I nearly had a complete shelf of blue spined Mega Drive games. But here's the thing. I don't know why Mega Drive games, some of them have these blue spines and some of them have kind of different designs. Is it the later games that had these blue spines? If you know, please let me know in the comments down below. I have no idea why this is and honestly, I don't know which ones I prefer. So let me know if you prefer the blue spines or the plain spines. Sticking with the Sega theme, I absolutely love collecting for the Mega CD, but it is a very, very tough console to collect well that's because it's very rare you actually see mega cd games that's why i was very tempted to pick this game right up here hook but i wasn't sure if this was the pal release it looked to me to be the ntsc release so i did pass now this store did have a very large selection of mega cd games but because it's a rare console to collect for most of these do command a very high price but let me know in the comments down below if you are a fellow mega cd collector and your favorite game some really cool stuff on this next store including some brand new turtle figures which i'd never seen before these movie star turtles are obviously retro inspired but the originals of these are really expensive and these kind of modern releases are a really cheap way to own some really cool retro inspired figures some really nicely displayed motu figures here i really love the plastic cases showing the figures and their weapons and these are super cool these artworks from video games they're the original cases which have obviously been cut down take from that what you will but these are really nice display pieces really really cool they look really clean with these black like frames in a glass really really nice but let me know in the comments down below which of these would you pick up for me i think i'm a sucker for the og castlevania Moving on and some really nice strategy guides here and also something quite interesting, these empty steelbooks. So they had both a steelbook for Resident Evil 4 and Street Fighter. Let me know in the comments down below which Street Fighter this is for. These were £7 each and here's the thing. As you know if you've been watching the channel for a long while, I'm a massive fan of steelbooks. But these are two steelbooks which I think in the future I'll be able to find in CEX. Some more cool SNES stuff here, including some new release games and also some controllers. I never knew these came in the same boxes essentially as games. And another copy here of Super Star Wars, but 
even for the price, this one was nowhere near as minty as the one which I had found earlier. A very nice Lilac Wars 64 big box. Another copy of Super Star Wars. These seem to be like buses. As soon as I've found the mintiest copy ever, I'm just finding more and more copies. As you can see, this one store had three copies of Super Star Wars, but... All of these paled in comparison to the one I had found earlier in the day, and I was still super chuffed. Now, this is a game you don't see very often, and as a Turtles fan, I need this in my collection. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game for the NES. Now, this was only 20 quid. It was boxed, but unfortunately, the box did have a pretty big bit of damage here on the side. Definitely one I want for my collection, but I am a patient man. I will wait until I can find a very nice mint copy. This was very cool and honestly very tempting to pick up. This Nintendo Deluxe Game Traveler for the Wii, which is essentially like a bowling ball bag. I think this is super cool. I think this has the Wii Sports crossover down to a T. I thought this was absolutely amazing, but sadly, just due to space, I didn't pick it up. This store had some really cool kind of rarer Nintendo stuff. Some of these kind of big box Wii games. The Splatoon, which came with the Amiibo. The Wii U big box came. Remington Bird Hunt, never seen it before. The Wii and the Wii U really did have some crazy big Nintendo box stuff. And I wonder in future if it's going to get super valuable. Some more amazing gaming artwork here i love these ones from the gamer framer these look super duper cool and i love the fact these also include the discs because honestly sometimes the best artwork from these games can be on the discs these were all super cool but for me i think my personal favorite just because of the memories it holds has to be fallout 3 there we have it then folks that was oxford gaming market my first visit and hopefully not my last visit it had been one of my favorite gaming markets i've ever been to and not only that oxford was an absolutely beautiful place to visit i don't think i've ever had such a perfect walk both to and from a gaming market now let's take it back to the games room for these amazing pickups here we are then back in the games room from Oxford Gaming Market. And what an absolutely fantastic day it was. It was a real breath of fresh air how quiet it seemed at Oxford Gaming Market. Which is crazy when you consider they sold 800 early bird tickets. But it was just laid out really nicely. There was space to move, space to browse. And more importantly we managed to find some absolutely god tier items for the collection. As I said at the start of this video, I was looking for the weird and the wonderful at Oxford Gaming Market. And this item certainly falls into that category. This is WWE Aftershock for the Nokia N-Gage. This is the first N-Gage game I've ever added to my collection. I haven't even got the console, but as a massive WWE fan, I had to pick this one up. That's because I'm going for a complete WWF and WWE wrestling game set and I've never seen this game before. The person who owned the stall said this wasn't released in the UK but for five quid I had to grab this weird and wonderful item. This next item is something I've been looking for and wanting since the early 90s. I remember flicking through the Argos catalogue and seeing this and just thinking it was the coolest thing of all time. Could you imagine being able to play Nintendo games on your watch? So as soon as I saw this at Oxford Gaming Market, I knew I had to have it. This Zelda Nintendo watch. That's right. You could be that cool that you could play Zelda on your LCD digital watch. This is a thing of absolute beauty. I also have the Mario version of this, which my wife lovingly gifted me this past Christmas, but you do not see these very often. Now, you can see here the price is 50 quid. I managed to get this down to 40 pounds cash. And trust me, it's always worth carrying cash at gaming conventions as you will get items at a better price if you can offer cash. And honestly, I didn't realise at the time how much of a bargain this is. The sold listings for this on eBay are so much higher. But after all these years, I'm so happy to finally add this to my collection and my wrist. I am amazed how long it's taken me to find this next item. Not quite since the early 90s, but it's amazing how hard these days it is to find a Game Genie for the Mega Drive. 
Now I see these all the time for the NES and the SNES, but I haven't seen one for the Game Genie for absolutely ages. So as soon as I saw this at Oxford Gaming Market, I knew I had to pick this up. I think it was listed at 16 and I managed to pick it up for 14. So if you don't know what this is, it is essentially a cheat cartridge. So you take your Mega Drive game, such as this game, The Lion King, which is hard as nails. You take the cartridge and you plug it into the top of the Game Genie like so. Then the Game Genie gets plugged into your Mega Drive. Now essentially with this little device you can add cheats and kind of mods to your games. So with something like the Lion King being hard as nails you can add infinite lives, invincibility, anything like that. And honestly with some of these old games this thing is absolutely priceless. Now the only thing is I do need a book which has all these codes in. I know a lot of these are online but there is kind of reprints of these books on Amazon but I'm really trying to find the original book for this game Judy that is the hardest part to find so let me know if you ever find a book for the very hard to find game genie which brings us on to our final pickup this time and I do not say this lightly but this is the mintiest SNES game I have ever seen in my entire life and I had to have it for the collection so for a little bit of context, at the last gaming market I went to, Leeds Gaming Market, I picked up this game right here, Super Return of the Jedi for the SNES. Now, of course, this is part of the Super Star Wars trilogy, which was released for the SNES. And as a massive Star Wars fan, when I saw this next game at Oxford Gaming Market, I knew I had to have it. Here it is then, folks, the mintiest SNES game I have ever seen in my entire life life and I picked this up off the stall of legendary YouTuber Ed Hunt. Now he is constantly on the hunt for some of the best retro and he is selling at gaming markets all around the UK and as soon as I saw him pick this game up I knew I had to have it. This game is Super Star Wars for the SNES. So I now have two of the three games for this trilogy and as you can see on the front here this is CIB and Mint and he had it up for £80 and cut me an incredible deal at £70 but I'm going to put some more pictures of this game on the side as the video just does not do this justice. It's of course in a box protector but this thing is absolutely breathtaking. It is in fantastic condition and some people may argue that it has the price sticker on it but for me that just makes it so much sweeter and even inside this is in absolutely mint condition and I do not use that term lightly this game is mint like it still has the plastic around the game even crazier than that it still has the original receipt from WH Smith and this is the crispiest manual I have ever ever seen I haven't opened this. I don't think this manual has ever been open. And honestly, this is just a thing of absolute unparalleled beauty. And again, the mintiest SNES game I've ever seen. I am so thankful to Ed Hunts for selling me this absolutely mint SNES game. Now he sold it to me at the exact same price that CEX sell this game when they list it as mint. But here's the thing. If you buy this game online from CEX and it's classed as mint, you have no idea what to expect. It is essentially a CEX lottery, but also you can't even play that lottery. There is not a single copy of this game listed as mint on the CEX app. So when I saw this, I knew I had to have it, which means two Super Star Wars games down, one more left to find. There we have it then folks, that was Oxford Gaming Market. It was an absolutely incredible day and we managed to add some amazing items to the collection. And I have one goal for the rest of 2024, to hit up as many of these gaming markets as possible to try and find those holy grail games for the collection. And there is one game now at the top of that hit list, Super Empire Strikes Back. So far at the past two gaming markets, I have managed to find Super Return of the Jedi and Super Star Wars and I will 
find Super Empire Strikes Back before the end of 2024. And these gaming markets are my best chance to find it. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, join me in the next gaming market. Until next time, keep playing the game. See you soon.